So nice to meet you again. It's, un, it's a big pleasure to be here. Thanks for coming. Um, how many of you has experience with Kubernetes? I see the faces, I see sad faces, I know. Yes, <laughs> no, no, I hope that this session is useful for you. So today we want to explain what is elevate security and observability with Cilium, it is the agenda. A little bit about EVPF, what is Cilium, how or what technology we can use in order to set up the environment and start to troubleshoot Cilium. We have a couple of demos, Cilium observability and Cilium security. So we are, again, Gerardo Lopez. It's a big pleasure to be here in the next slide. I'm a principal engineer in Veritas Automata, super fan of soccer, movie, barbecue, and my colleague, Fabrizio Segura, chief engineer. So again, very happy for this, for this chance. Okay, thank you. So let me explain a little context. In today's landscape, all about Kubernetes microservices is a big topic focusing on networking, on security, and of course, network observability in Kubernetes is a paramount. Due to the growth exponential, usability, and usage in production environments, thanks to Kubernetes, okay? So the higher end complexity of distributed architecture right now is causing that we need to pay attention to different things. First of all, performance issues. Second one, we need to pay attention about possible vulnerabilities. So it is the reason that we need to enhance security and improve observability. Why? Because allow us identifying and mitigating possible vulnerabilities and performance issues as well. Proactively, we can detect and resolve network and performance issues. And lastly, this contributes to maintaining the integrity, reliability, visibility, and availability of application deploying on Kubernetes. So again, work on distributed architecture is a big challenge. It's beautiful, you can have different things, but we have challenges to resolve in the backbone, the network. So in the next slide, we can explain the main topics that we are using, and why not? You can involve with us in this adventure. So what the EPF is? What the EPF is, a, is an interesting technology. It's an open source and flexible framework that in simple words, you can't insert dynamically snippets or code into the Linux kernel space using a way and secure manner. So you don't need to modify the kernel at all. You add dynamically and runtime the code and add new functionalities, in simple words. Overall, EPF is a versatile technology that empowers developers and administrators to extend and enhance these skills or these capabilities in Linux kernel in a safe and efficient manner, opening up a new possibility for performance optimization, observability, and of course, security informants. Different use cases. In the next slide, we can see about how the business or different use cases the people are using about EPF. So we can start about three important pillars that we believe all applications need to have. First of all, the networking. So it's very important. Right now, there are people, other project, open source project and private project that is incorporating network policies, enforcing the network and, of course, the security itself. So networking, security, and observability and tracing Four and three pillars, very important, that EPF is doing into the um, cloud native ecosystem. So if we go to user space, you will see we have project and SDKs. So most important project, of course, PC. You can continue the creating code thanks to PC and incorporate or add into the kernel, Cilium, Falco, Catran, and Pixie. Of course, there are a lot of other projects that we can use. But if you see right now in the cloud system or the cloud architecture native, you will see this project the people are using. So about the SDK, we have, I think, some important range of technologies. How many of you has experience using GoLand? C++? Yeah, it's normal, no problem. <laughs> C++. Uh, of course, Rust. Okay, Rust. 
So right now, there are the SDK the EPF has. Why? It's totally normal, because this programming language are more focused to the low level. So for this reason, different SDKs. And probably in the next years, new language, uh, programming languages will appear in this list. Of course, we can optimize the application using tracing, profiling, and monitoring. So about the kernel runtime, we can see we can use technology like verifier, mapping, and others. So again, observability is not the same than monitoring. Thanks to observability, we can go beyond. Why? Thanks to UPF and Cilium and this kind of technologies, we can make decisions. What make decisions? Why? Because if you don't have metrics, if you don't have measurements, how you can make decisions? It's, it's hard. So I need data, I need measurements in, in order to make decisions. So EPF in the next slide, thanks to EPF, appears new technologies like Cilium. Cilium is a powerful networking and security solution for Kubernetes environments. And so regularly, you will see that people say, Cilium, ah, Cilium is another CNI. Cilium is, no, is not another CNI. Why? For all the capabilities that Cilium offers. So we can probably discuss Cilium versus Calico, Cilium versus Flannel. We can this later <laughs> in the coffee in order to continue with the, the presentation. Or see, we have time, we can discuss a little bit. But Cilium go beyond to the CNI. Why? Because we, Cilium offers advanced feature in the layer seven. So it means that we can capture metrics flow in the layer seven and layer four. So it's, it's, it's a, a great thing because you can capture all the flow that what is happening in the network. By leveraging EVPF technology, Cilium provides efficient packet processing and scalability while ensuring robust network security and observability. It enhances Kubernetes networking capabilities, enabling seamless communication between microservices while enforcing security policies and scale. So we have all in one. We can improve security, observability, and of course, all related with the monitoring stuff. A, a little exp explanation, high level, how Cilium works. Uh, it's, very no, it's, it's totally common, it's the fact right now in Kubernetes environments, different applications are using the operator. The operator is responsible for managing all the concepts. Cilium has the operator, and thanks to the operator can communicate with all the nodes. Cilium using the approach daemon set, it means that in all different nodes in Kubernetes install an agent. It means this agent is responsible for create and monitor the networking communication between pods into the node. So it means that if I have 10 nodes, I will have 10 agents. And responsible for maintaining and updating all the life cycle of Cilium is the operator. How will the operator communicate with the agent using the key value, communication, so similar with the ATCD in Kubernetes? It is the communication that is happening. It is a little bit high level architecture about Cilium. Two important components, operator and the agents. In the next slide, we can see all the advantages that we can use in Cilium. Network visibility, service discovery, rich metrics. I will see example in a couple of minutes how we can get metrics from the kernel thanks to EPF and expose in Grafana. So thanks to the rich metrics. With these metrics, again, we can make decisions. How is, how is the performance of our application? How is this performance about our network? Layer 7 visibility, and of course, flow visualization. Um, I don't know in your case, but in, our, in, in, in my case, sometimes I see developers that need more tools in order to see what is happening behind the scenes, because Kubernetes is a complex concept. So Cilium offers UI, interesting service map UI that you, I will explain it to you in a couple of minutes, and the developers can make decisions, can see what is happening in between different components. In the next slide, so it is other high level how Cilium works in this case. Cilium intercepts all the traffic, all the network traffic that is happening behind the scenes between our application or apps or pods and create tools for us. 
tools like service map, Hubble UI, in order that the people can see easier what is happening in the network. So it is a little diagram in order, I hope that we can oh, explain this. But Cilium is the heart, it's the backbone. It's getting the information and creating it for us. Okay, in the next slide, I will move to the terminal. So, in the meantime, my colleague Fabricio will help me to create the environment. So, we want to recommend two technologies. First of all, if you want to work locally, you can use Kind. Kind is a good tool in order to create Kubernetes in your computer. Kind use, use Docker in order to simulate the nodes in your computer. It's so beautiful. So in this case, we are right now adding um, different images in order to work that. And the second technology is, we are not getting any promotion to, the say, to say that, Rancher. So Rancher use RK2. RK2 is a good technology because you can specify in a YAML what CNI you want to use previous to, to create the, the, the container, sorry, the, the cluster itself. So, okay, let me get started with the demo. We have this script. If you see, um, bless you. If you see under the networking, we are disabling the default CNI from kind. We are passing or putting the true value. It means that we want to create a cluster with three nodes, one node. You can, you can create. Um, we can create three nodes, one, the, one node is the control plane, the E2, E2 um, nodes are worker. But the idea with this example is create a cluster, Kubernetes cluster, dis disabling the CNI. We execute some, no problem about that because at finishing the activity, we can pass you all the scripts if you want to run in your local. Right now we are creating the control plane, we're installing the storage class and joining the worker nodes into the computer and waiting a little bit what will happen. It's of, of course, we'll create um, a, a cluster so quick with that. So <laughs> if we clear the screen, so we'll, we will add it, or we'll add all the different image versions, previous version, why? Because the idea, for in order to respect the demo, we need to accelerate that. The a beautiful things of kind is that you can reload images previous into the technology. It means that when you create things, the nodes will use the preloaded images and will create the things so quick. Right now, we are um, exposing or viewing the YAML that, we, that the cluster created. And so, waiting a little bit. The, all the images are preloaded into the kind cluster. And so what does it mean? It means that in the next script, we will create, right now here, exactly, thanks Fabricio. So if we run kubectl get nodes, you will see that the three nodes are not ready status. Why? Because it's pending the installation of the CNI. If you see the pods, no any pods about Cilium, so then all is impending, of course, mainly the core DNS, because core DNS needs the CNI in order to work. So in the next command, okay, Cilium status, we, Cilium has a CLI. It's beautiful, because thanks to CLI, you can create a run commands behind the scenes, communicate with the, with the cluster, and you will see what is the status of the Cilium. In this case, errors, of course, because nothing is installed. In this command, we will install Cilium. Cilium, you can install Cilium so easy using a hand chart, 
Right now, we are enabling the basic features about Cilium. We run the command, and thanks to the previous preloaded images, this configuration will be so fast. What is happening behind the scenes is happening. Maybe you can run other commands in order to see, get notes. Yeah, right. If you run the command, you will see the start already. Thanks that we, all the nodes are ready to use. If you run the command again, the get pods, you will see we have three pods, four pods, psyllium with dash, some specifically this definition. Every, if you please run the, with the dash O wide in order to see what node White, white, W E. Okay. Okay. Cilium status, you will see. Can you go up, please, in order to see the cilium status? Okay. If you see or run again, clear and clear, please, and cilium status again. If you see, okay, right now Cilium is okay, the operator is okay, different and ons are not installed. For example, whole relay that my colleague will uh, enable very soon. But important things, deployment the Cilium operator, desired, ready, and available pods. Cilium is checking that right now the operator has installed two pods. Damon said the Cilium desired three, why? Do you remember that I mentioned at the beginning why is tall three, three pots about psyllium, the psyllium? What is the answer? Why? Demon set. Appreciate. Excellent. Thanks to Demon set, we have three nodes, and we install it, one per node. And that's it. It's psyllium operator, we can see all the information, hammer chart, email versions, and that's it. So it's so easy to use, but of course, it is the beginning. My colleague will explain more about observability and security, and so, Fabricio? I will run comments, because I like to do that, and I know that you like to see. So I will use this ice cream. I hope that you hear me. Can you? Yes? So we installed the kind cluster. Now it's time to go for setting some Prometheus, Grafana. What we will do, we'll, we'll create dashboards, or show dashboards that we previously installed because Cilium is instrumented for observability. So at this time, like Gerardo started with the cluster, I am going to add more comments. And for this, I will comment this Helm comment that we'll install. Initially, the Prometheus Grafana, we have a GIST here that is in our repo, all of the scripts that I'm using here, they are available in a repo that we are going to share with you as soon as you add us to your LinkedIn, because there is a price to pay. So, and it's shareable, so it's a, a gist that we have. Everything is working, basically the zero zero are the scripts that are installing all the kinds and similar, it's ready to use. It's something that is working almost perfectly. So I will run that 0, 3 script. Then I will run this one. I'm using a modified version to show you colors. But basically, this other command that is enabling the relay for the Hubble UI, so you will see that we can instrument and see in uh, the dashboards and in Hubble UI things that are happening. The idea is to install this Prometheus stack so it will use the content of the previous script that I showed you and then the uh, enabling the service map that will be something we will use to see the output in Hubble. After completing this part that is related to the service map, we can port forward the Grafana. I will just show you that the pod should be running here. 
otherwise we fail something, is the monitoring namespace round there. There are Grafana and Prometheus available. So we have our observability embedded in kind. That is always a good point to learn how these tools are working. So we installed both Prometheus and the service map. Now it's time to do something that is the port forward of Grafana. Uh, we can see that here I have the command ready to gain time, but basically it's, we are going to expose the service endpoint that Grafana is creating with a port forward on the same port 3000. I left that for visibility. It can be omitted, but really it's something that everyone will appreciate. And I should be able to run a browser somewhere. Let me check if I can find the browser to have it on port 3000 and share with you the output of Grafana as we prepared previously. So I'm going to put Grafana here. There is no trick. Is really the Grafana that I installed. As you can see, it's running on localhost 3000. And we will see that we already have tools that are able to provide us some metrics. So if we go here, this is already embedded in Cilium. So you don't have to bother about building your dashboard, squaring the data, just installing Prometheus and sending everything. We can scroll down. Probably it's not really readable at the moment, but there is uh, a lot of metrics related to eBPF, to the network itself, and many other informations that can really be useful when you are troubleshooting and you are being not just a DevOps, but also whatever you are doing with the CNI, eBPF, whatever. As you can see, it's a lot of data. You just have to get familiar with that, and it could really surprise you. A part of the Cilium metrics that we have here. There are other dashboards related to the Hubble UI. We will see that the UI is something that is coming on after running a comment. And you see, it's very useful. So I will not enter the detail of all the uh, dashboards that we have here. But as soon as we use the stack that we created, it will be filled up with a lot of information that are obviously very important for each one that is working on this kind of detection. So if we come back here, now it's time to expose the Cilium uh, Hubble UI. I will use the typical Cilium Hubble UI command because it's probably the faster one that we can use. So I will switch terminal here. Cilium Hubble UI. It should open something if I have no typos. No, it's OK. I will share with you the screen of what it opens. So it's a primitive interface. They are working to improve the content here. But basically, we have all the namespaces that we can query. And here, you will see that there are the components that are running and a status that is interesting because we will see in the next section that is related to security. I will be very brief on security because we can do a lot of things with the rules that you can use for layer seven. I what? Yeah. So I can announce the screen, but it's not something that you can view more. I can do the control plus, but I think that Really. It's something that you can experiment downloading the scripts. So the content here basically of the Hubble UI is giving us a situation of what is happening across the pods that are running inside the cluster. Are you familiar with Hubble? Someone that is familiar? No one is familiar, so you are. Cilium generally started with Hubble embedded. It was the initial idea for giving visibility to all the things that were happening among the different pods running inside the Kubernetes network. At that point, 
They didn't enhance that a lot, but it's still a valid option to filter out what is happening in the column where you see the green. When we will run the commands to query a specific rule that will be um, forbidden, you will see that there, there will be a red one, or we can also use the Hubble observe comments using the Hubble CLI, but for the moment, let's leave it as it is. And let's go for installing a pod. Now I will be using another one, so this one, and I will install a pod that is just running Nginx. So let's see what it is. This pod, this script, is just installing the classic pods that you have in the Kubernetes documentation. I kept it easy to read for that reason. And I will also use a policy. Initially, let's go for the Kubernetes one, this one. So if you are familiar with network policies in Kubernetes, you see that here I'm using a classic easy one, so I am just saying that I'm allowing ports 80 and 443, and I am also allowing DNS traffic. The difference that I want to show you at level seven, it's very simple, basic. You can do much more things with rules on the HTTP level. So in example, you can filter on Nginx the route to a specific page if you have the index.html and you want to see it, but not the about.html from specific filters that are related to labels or annotations or other strategies that you can find in the Cilium documentation related to the rules, it's really flexible. What you can do in Cilium, you cannot do in Kubernetes policies. So if we use this, let me see, because I don't see what I'm writing. <laughs> so, tickets, Cilium, policies, yum, yes. This is the difference. As you can see here down, I'm specifying only the endpoints of google.com that is queryable by the DNS. So, after the testing, we will not be able from that container to run a query to another endpoint. That means that I will be able to filter at level seven the application layer for querying a specific DNS without blacklisting it in another way. This is not possible in network policies, so it's a big difference. As I said, you can do that on the HTTP level. You can see here that there is a specific DNS reference in the list of YAML, I hope that you can see the characters, but probably not. Let's see if I can get bigger, not that much, but I want to show you a specific entry that is describing the ability of using the cube DNS for that port, and down here, you can see that we have the DNS entry here, so I can specify the effective name of the endpoint that I want to query. Now let's, we created the pods of Nginx, so what I will do is run in a couple of comments, but before of doing that, I will show you the comments, so we will use the classic Google is responding and we will also query another endpoint that is familiar to everyone. We will use Microsoft. It is responding. At this point, I will apply the Kubernetes policies. No, nothing will change. It's the same policy translated to Cilium later. So I'm applying that policy that was the first one that I showed you. And you will see that Google will answer, Microsoft will answer too. Now let's delete the Kubernetes policy. So I can use my specific command line. Oh, yeah. 
we deleted that one and we apply now the other policy that is the Cilium policy NS because it's based on namespace. I forgot to comment that this policy is a specific of the pods that I'm using for Nginx here. So it's a co pod called HTTP test namespace and web Nginx pods. At this point, I will run again the two queries, one to Google. You remember that should work. And oh, not answering. But look at the message. It's not a curl pending. It's a cannot resolve host. So it is acting exactly on kubeDNS. It is not resolving for that specific host. Saying that, we could look at the browser where we have these specific entries. And here, we see that in this case, it is still forwarding. Probably I need to refresh this. Or maybe I will use the Hubble UI, the Hubble observe comment. Because for this specific thing, we will be able to see a red login line. So let's go here. Red login line, let's see. Now, you see that here it's full of green forwarded messages. If I go to call again the comments that we were using previously, so I should have them saved in this terminal, I think this time. No, I will open another terminal. It's a little bit. And I will run the two curl that you saw earlier. After some time, here, it should not show, it should show something that is traced. So not forwarded anymore, but traced by something that is in color of brown. That means that the behavior is not forwarded anymore, but it's sent to trace because it's observed in the previous dashboards. All the things that we did now are available, obviously, in the Grafana interface that should be still available here down or here. And we should be able to see a lot of information related to the tracing and the activity that we did on the Cilium metrics and capture. You can see that data has been uh, filling for all the time that we were effectively running comments, and it's confirming that we can observe what is happening on the network. So saying that, I think that we completed the part related to the operational demo. Uh, we can come back to the slides, skip the part related to the black boxes here, but I would like to focus to one point. So how you can do to create this uh, Cilium policies for network. I've been using the editor that is available online by Isovalent. You can go to the page and you will see this is not something that you can run locally at. As far as I know, I've not been able to do that, but on the site of the Isovalent company, you can run this specific interface, a page, and create your own rules they will be available here as a Kubernetes policy, network policy, and as a Cilium network policy. So I decided to include what was the same YAML files that I used and I generated here. As you can see that uh, in this case, it's very visible and easy to use. If you go there and you are familiar a little with the, the um, namespaces, the isolation and similar, this will produce an output here down that you can copy past in your cluster and do the same experiment. 
I think that is everything that I can share with you for today. And uh, go go ahead with uh, adding specific things. So, Gerardo, I will give you the ice cream. Thanks, Fab. Before go to the questions, I hope that probably there are. So, um, Cilium is very proud to say that Sycarless. Um, Sycar is a a good pattern that regularly I, I like it. No problem about that. But the pattern of Sycar is at an extra pot, a one specific pot for, for example, um, proxy or collecting things, irregularly the famous init containers. But thanks to EPF, Cilium is not, no, don't need Sycar, doesn't need Sycar. Why? Because all is directly with the kernel. Similar with Envoy, for example. With Cilium, we can go, direct, go directly to the kernel and apply things. So it's all the important point that we want to mention, the availability do, don't depend on about Cycar itself. So I don't know, questions? Thank you. We'll, we'll start with the yeah, question. So I'll, I'll go around and uh, use the microphone for you okay, so you can report the question. Whoa. Is this on? So is this bypassing uh, IP tables and queue proxy to do its its networking stuff altogether? It's just going directly into the kernel, creates a VM there, and that's where you're getting all this telemetry information? So nice question. Effectively, for the people that are working with firewalling generally, IB, IP tables, EB tables, hex tables, all that kind of layers that are embedded already in the Linux network stack, are running also inside the kernel. You know that mod probe, IP tables, and so on, it's necessary for performing all of those activities. eBPF is giving Cilium the ability to write a specific k-native usage of that interface. So you are filtering the information thanks to eBPF from the kernel to the network stack. And that example that I was showing you about Google versus Microsoft it's not just to say that one is better than other, but especially to say that we are able to create an additional layer that generally in IP tables would require resolving because it's only on the IP layer. It's not la layer seven or the OCI standard. So we don't know the application layer in IP tables while here we know. It's not really a replacement. It's probably an additional resource that Kubernetes can count on thanks to the eBPF technology. Everyone familiar with eBPF should say also that you can use that outside of Kubernetes too, it's not a must. But for Kubernetes, the advantage is that you can really replace and be more specific on what is firewalling. If you have been using a platform like WAF of AWS, Web Application Firewall, it's very similar to the concept that you can add a sort of proxying, not specific proxying, but I was not showing you a rule that you can add to the HTTP layer that is, in example, on routing. So slash index HTML possible, slash about HTML not possible for that pod that is running in Kubernetes filtered by annotations. This is Sumant here. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, in, a, in a service mesh world, sidecars are critical. Uh, in the, with the uh, Selenium, how it is gonna impact the service mesh kind of use cases? So service mesh, in this case, is something that Selenium uh, is able to provide as a native resource uh, with the ability of using resources like Gateway and similar. In the case of specific Cilium network policies, you can effectively filter the resource, but it's not really what you can do with, an example, the Cilium API Gateway. The API Gateway is able to, sh to give you an, uh, the, the ability of using the service mesh also for Canary deployments. We haven't covered that here because it was 
expressively focused on the network security, but obviously on service mesh, the observability that is running on Grafana would have been tracking also the service mesh ability that you have when you create a specific Cilium service mesh. It's another custom resource definition of the Cilium bundle API extension. So if you go to Kubernetes and you start looking at how many resources in the CRDs for Cilium are added by the operator that is basically having a lot of controllers on each of those resources, doing a reconciled logic, when you add a service mesh resource in the CRDs of Cilium, then it will immediately trigger all the things that are related to observability, but not necessarily to network policy if you don't specify something that is labeled or annotated that way. So they are independent, but coming from the same stack. There is another thing that we could add. Cilium is also a replacement for Istio multi-clustering. We are not covering that here, but in your case, the service mesh and the multi-clustering are also isolated for the, from that kind of policies that you can have, and you can just rely on network like it was for IP tables or for a squid proxy that was filtering a specific route. What we cannot do with a specific HTTP route is the URI yet. We can filter the whole URL and the route, but not the URI. So what is coming after that with query parameters, we cannot. Hi. One Kubernetes flavor is um, a core OS OKD. Um, is Cil will Cilium run on there uh, on core OS? So on core OS, core OS, I don't know who of you is using and knowing core OS before of Fedora. Core OS was initially a very good operating system that was running containers initially with Rocket Engine. Then it was acquired by Red Hat and Fedora and maintained. Initially it was using a security stack that was called Tecton and it was a very good alternative for running Apache Mesos. If you run Kubernetes on top of core OS, it's like running Kubernetes on top of Fedora Atomic. So you rely on a lot of features that are implemented on the network stack by Red Hat to run containers and it's quite hard, in my case, I've not been trying in the last time, but I've been using CoreOS a lot in the last 10 years for Mesos, specifically, not for Kubernetes. The rocket-based um, kernel and the fact that they adapted to Docker, the fact that they are using Podman and Cryo as a container engine should be disposable with Kubernetes, but for Cilium, it can be tricky to have it up and running, and there is something that we were discussing previously with Gerardo about Cilium's network stack. It's easy to run it on top of an existing RKE2 cluster, Kubernetes, but when you go to EKS, AKS, and Coreos, you could face specific problem related to the installation that are exactly for the kernel differences in drivers, and probably it will be not yet the time for that to run uh, the Cilium on top of Coreos as a Fedora Coreos distribution. If you do that, probably you will find some challenges to face. Uh, I'm wondering when you guys start supporting URIs. Well, can, you can you shout more? <laughs> All right, can you hear me? Yes. All right, when you uh, move to like implement URI support, do you plan to expose that in Hubble and will we also be able to see headers and things like that? Or is it just gonna be like the path like it seems to be today? So in our case, I, I will give you a real fast background to see how we went to the adoption of Cilium. Our background was Calico and Istio. We then boy proxy. So everything related to sidecar containers. At that point, you know that Envoy Proxy is using that ability to filter URI. Also, for example, in Canary deployment for service mesh that are working with 99.1 deployment or blue-green deployment, 
but sincerely, we are not yet using that feature. I can say that Cilium is able to provide you the layer to implement the URI filtering when you are using the service mesh, not the network policies. So if you use the Cilium service mesh, you can effectively work with Canary. You have two versions up and running on the same namespace with a percentage that is establishing which one of the service is responding more than other. You don't have an instrumentation yet to track there. You should install Kiali or Jagger like you do in Istio. At that point, you are able to see the URI filtering. The, the big advantage using Cilium is that you see almost the same, but you don't install Istio, which is very painful. And second point is that it's straightforward. So it's something that really you can run a, a Helm install for that kind of resources, and it will be transparent. Any other questions? Go ahead. You want to answer some questions? <laughs> this, was, this was mostly around the performance between uh, the alternatives. So if you're running Istio versus running Cilium, is there a lower footprint and lower overhead with Cilium than there would be with Istio besides the sidecar? So basically, comparing performances between Istio and Cilium. Here, we can say really easily that you can try that on kind, and you will see that Istio is overwhelming the system. It's creating a lot of resources. When I used the command line, I was not really looking at the screen because uh, some comments was there, then I was using auto-completion. It was really easy to work. When you use Istio, probably I would have been switching constantly the terminal here to look at what I was uh, effectively writing. And the fact that, first of all, it's using Envoy. So it's good because it's C, but it's evil because it's a sidecar container. So you lose the control of the stack. It's not an init container. In terms of advantages, the only thing that I feel it's still something they have to fix or find a solution is that in Istio, when you use Canary deployment, you use Kiali and Jagger. Here, they are not ready to go. For multi-clustering, Istio is very complex and will require something that will need to implement a sort of additional layer like a VPN. If you have tried to do multi-clustering, is someone here familiar with Kubernetes multi-clustering? It's a challenge. I don't know if you tried, but Imagine that you have to connect two different clusters and you have two challenges. One is the one that we are facing in our current reality that is pairing a cluster to another for a distributed system. So not for a cooperational cluster like Istio, having a pod here, another here that is running in China, one in the US, and they are doing the same activity but balanced. That is Istio multi-clustering. In Cilium, what I can do is to have a peer running here in China, another peer running here in the US, they are peering, not cooperational activity, master-slave clustering, but they are really distributed. So in our use case, in example, or what I work more in daily activities, I can do blockchain thanks to Cilium inside Kubernetes. That is still a big challenge, but it's not possible with Istio. So keeping on your answer back, Istio, they have to work better on removing the Envoy support, doing something more lightweight, and then we have to say in any case that Istio is paired to Calico and Tiger since a lot of time, so you will depend on the Calico stack for block affinity of the nodes, and it will add more complexity. Calico is doing the same. Let's say the true. It's not doing something different. But the point is that you have to edit the YAML files for doing things correctly, while here it's very straightforward. And there are no tons of custom resource definitions to call, but it's just something that you go and do. It's easier. So for me, if you have Istio, start to do the isovalent courses 
uh, that are available for free, and you will immediately realize in one day that it's very simple. Any other questions? So probably um, before finishing, one thing that I want to add is um, our idea is don't say Instio doesn't work. No, Instio is a good, good project, but depends your needs. Depends what do you need in your company, in your job. I want to remember, Cilium recently was graduated. Instio has way. So compare, enjoy it. The reason that we are using Kind is because you can destroy it, your local cluster and no problem. So I hope that you enjoyed the presentation. Um, destroy the cluster. Yeah, destroy it. <laughs> and so uh, for us, it's a big pleasure if you can come back to the presentation. So it is. OK, destroy the cluster. <laughs> Yeah, with kind this magic. You can delete the cluster, have all the cluster itself. So again, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. It is on links. Thank you.